Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we be upstanding as we take the opening prayer? We give you glory, Lord, as we worship you. We give you glory, Lord, as we Thank you because we are in your sanctuary today. We are not in the mortuary. We thank you, Father, King of glory, because we are not better than the destitute on the street. We thank you for clothing. We thank you for the shelter. We thank you, Father, King of glory, because today we can breathe the air which you give to us freely. You are worthy to receive all our praises. We pray your name be highly exalted in Jesus' name. As we begin today's service, Father, King of glory, we pray all our expectations shall be met in Jesus' name. You shall touch each and every one of us, Father, King of glory. You know all the deepest desires of our hearts, Lord. We pray may they all be met, Father, King of glory. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered our prayers. We open today's service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Briefly, we would read from, begin our worship service this morning from the book of Psalms 150, and we'll all read together. The word of the Lord says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. I believe somebody is praising God. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Is somebody dancing? Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Just take a moment and praise and magnify God this morning for his greatness, for his awesome power, for protecting, for providing, for forgiving, for being merciful, for not dealing with us according to our sins. Let's just thank him. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise. Father, Son, and Holy 
this morning. May God hear from the depths of your heart that you are really grateful for the things that money cannot buy and the things money can buy. For the gift that he gives, the gift of eternal life. For salvation that money cannot buy. For the ability to breathe and to wake up this morning. For the things that we have been praying for that we've received. For the things that we are yet to receive. For hope that is not deferred. From January to February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Give him praise. Give him praise. Let the fruit of your lips give him praise. For sicknesses that he has taken, that he has not allowed to kill us. Only the living can praise you. Only the living can praise you. If you are alive in the sanctuary, give him praise. If you are not in the mortuary, lift your voice and say, Do. If it were not for God who was on our side, if it were not God who had saved us. Take a moment and really, really appreciate God. Just take a moment. You can bow your head in worship. You can roll on the floor in worship. You can lift your hands in worship. You can dance in worship. Just take a moment and give Him praise. Just take a moment and magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me. He has done great and mighty things. 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 He's done what money cannot do. He's done what money cannot do. Oh, lift your hands and worship him. If somebody is truly grateful, just thank him. Oh, in advance, thank him. For the things he has done, thank him. For the things he's doing, thank him. Thank him for the past. Thank him for the present. Thank him for the future. Hey, yeah, 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 You know that prayer point. Only you know it. For me, he has done great things. 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 And all I want to do is worship him. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Showhouse Assembly. Thank you for the prayers you answer in Showhouse Assembly. Thank you, Lord, for being through to your word. We give you all the praise. As a church this morning, we lift our hands and say, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Individually, we say thank you. As a church, we say thank you. We have not buried for the last one yet. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody alive today. Does somebody want to praise God today? Yes. Give the Lord the clap offering. Give the Lord the dance offering. Give the Lord the shout offering. Are we good? Let's go. Give the Lord your dance offering. You can go to one or two neighbors. God has been good to me.
to answer that prayer. We trust in your ability to promote who is unpromotable. We trust in your ability to make a way where there seems to be no way. We trust in your ability to turn a dollar to the most intelligent. We trust in your ability to turn around the economy of Nigeria. We trust in your ability to turn around the economy of my home. We trust in your ability to mend every broken marriage, every broken relationship. We trust in your ability to give children to the barren. We trust in your ability to make the sick whole. <laughs> we trust in your ability. We judge you faithful Lord. You have never disappointed us. You have never disappointed us. When we call upon you as a church, you answer. When we call upon you as individuals, we answer. Father, as a church, we judge you faithful. This morning, I want you to say, God, that thing that is impossible, in my life by human standards make it a possibility this week that impossibility that letter we're expecting that call we're expecting that email we are expecting that thing that the men of the world call impossible we judge you faithful to make it a possibility in show house that thing that is impossible the impossibility of having this building and having many more 
the possibility of growing into hundreds of thousands. That thing that seemed impossible in my life, that the doctors have written off, that the lawyers have written off. Lord, make it a possibility this week in Jesus' name. Make it a possibility this week in Jesus' name. In my life, in my family. Make it a possibility in the name of Jesus. I don't know that thing that makes you cry in the night when nobody is watching. That is exactly the thing I want you to lay before the throne of heaven today. Before the mercy seat. The song says God is able to do just what he said he would do. Did he say it? He would do it. It doesn't matter how many years ago he said it, he would do it. It will come to pass. Lord, every prophecy concerning my life, let it come to pass in the name of Jesus. Let it pass in my lifetime. I don't want posthumous celebration. Let it come to pass in my lifetime. In my own very eyes will I see. Him. And the prophetess Anna waited and waited until the Messiah was born. And she said, now that my eyes are seen, I can go. And Caleb, even at the age of 80, was able to take back what belongs to him. I want you to say this morning, everything the kanka woman has eaten, in my life, everything the palma woman has eaten, everything the locust has eaten, in my health, in my finances, in my career, Lord, let there be a restoration this morning. Let there be a restoration this week. Let there be a restoration this year. Let there be a restoration this month. In the name of Jesus. Let my eyes see it. Let my hands carry it. Let my eyes see it. Let my hands carry it. The land of Canaan you have prepared for me. Let my feet walk into it. Not my cups. In the name of Jesus. In my lifetime. Let me judge you faithful. And so heavenly father we thank you. We thank you because you are the God of impossibilities. We thank you because where man's effort ends, that is where you begin. We thank you, Lord, because you're the one that turns a life around without collecting anything from any payment, any price. You are the one that makes the sick whole. You don't just heal them, you make them whole. The Bible said when the lepers came back to give you thanks, that one leper, you didn't just heal him from leprosy. You made him whole that every limb that had been cut off, Lord, he grew back. It is that same miracle that we want you to manifest in this congregation. That every life that has been battered with sickness, that has been battered with poverty, that has been battered with stagnation, that has been battered with sorrow, this morning we ask you, don't just heal their waters. Don't just heal their finances. Don't just heal their bodies. Make them whole in the name of Jesus. Let our eyes see your goodness. Let our hands carry the goodness. And let our tongue testify of your goodness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're singing a hymn this morning, O oh, Worship the King. Oh, grateful is He, He 
Let's be seated. We are welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, this month we've been, we've been uh, treating the topic, the love of God. And today we are taking the topic, true love. Today's topic is true love. True love. And our text is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 4 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So when we charity there means love. It says, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity founded not itself, is not puffed, puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not our own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, openeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Praise the name of the Lord. The topic once again is true love. And the dictionary defines love as a profound, tender, passionate affection for another person. So it is it is a feeling or emotion. That is the emotional type of love. But one thing we know is that feelings change and it's not reliable. One moment, one person is saying, I'm in love with you. You are the only sugar in my tea and all. The next minute, the same person is saying, I'm no longer in love with you. That is what feelings do. So feelings change and it's not reliable. 
But with the, the true love we're talking about, that is the agape love, the godly love. It's not a feeling or emotion. So agape love or true love is a choice you make. It's a choice you make to seek the well-being of others. It's a choice you make to seek the well-being of others without seeking anything in return. So all you do is you seek the well-being of others without seeking anything in return. It is a commitment. It's an act of your will. Because they don't force you. They can't force you to love. It's an act of your will. It entails sacrifice. And that was what we see displayed in John chapter 3, verse 16. A perfect picture of this true love is seen when we look at Jesus on the cross. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So this true love, we see it when we look at Jesus on the cross. It is love that brought Jesus to the hurt. And it is this love that made him to go to the cross to die for us while we were yet sinners. According to what we have in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. While we were yet, yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So what does God expect from us? What does he expect from you and I? He, he expects that we love one another. That is his expectation. First John chapter 4, 9 to 12. First John chapter 4, 9 to 12. He said, in this was manifested the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Hearing his love, not that we loved God, but uh, that he loved us. And he sends his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we, if we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Praise the Lord. So the way that people will know that you are actually a Christian is by the way you relate with other people, the way you treat other people. Even without you saying that, I'm a Christian. When people see you and the way you relate with other people, they will say, surely is a Christian. Surely she is a Christian. Yes, God said we should love one another. So how are we supposed to love one another with agape love that we have in that First Corinthians chapter 13? That's our text. Can you bring it back? Yes. We can see so many characteristics there. The first one is that charity, please just leave it. The first one is that charity suffered long. Charity suffered long. The, the, the meaning of that suffered long is that charity is patient. If you love me, then you'll be patient with me. God is so patient with us. When you look at what some people are doing, be like, ah, oh no, man, it's so rude. God is very patient with us, and God desires that we will be patient with people around us also. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. It says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men. We must be patient towards all men. Even those unruly, after we correct them, we're patient. The feeble-minded. We need to be patient towards all men. Don't say, ah, you are too slow for me. Ah, oh, I cannot stand. No. The Bible says we should be patient with all men. All men. And the second one, please take the, uh, put the text back. The second part says, um, no, that's uh, First Corinthians 13. Okay. First Corinthians 13, the first one, verse 4. Verse 4, okay. We said charity suffered long and is kind. So love is kind. 
if I indeed have the love of God in me, that means I'll be kind. What does it mean? Kindness starts with the kind of words that come from your mouth. You don't speak harshly to people. People are going through a lot lately, a lot. So you, 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 you don't just speak to people anyhow. You speak encouraging words into the lives of people. We must be kind. And we can see kindness in the life of Dorcas in Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 42. This was a woman that was taking care of widows, poor widows. She saw the need in their lives, and she decided to be making clothing for them. Making clothes is not something that you can do within two, three minutes. It takes time. So she, she, she used her time. She, probably she was even the one that bought the materials. She used her time, her money, she used it to take care of these people. She saw a need in the lives of these widows, and she decided to step in and take care of them. That was why when she died, they just had to go to Peter and say, ah, no, this woman cannot just go like this. I will know what happened. So what we should do, if indeed we are kind, if indeed we have the love of God in us, this agape love, we should go and look, you know, our brethren, our brothers and sisters, what is that need that they have? They don't even need to open their mouth to tell us anything. Once you notice that this person has a need, try as much as possible to help. Praise the Lord. Then, love is not jealous. I'm not jealous about your happiness. I'm not jealous about your promotion. That's one thing about love. You know, it's easier for people to... The Bible says that we should rejoice with those that rejoice and we should mourn with those that mourn. Most of the time, it's, people, it's easier for people to mourn with those that mourn. But when they see you rejoicing, they are like, ah, show me corny. Every time, every time it's coming to give testimony. Is it the only one? But we should learn to rejoice. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Because your own will soon come. Your own turn will soon come. People will rejoice with you too. In the mighty name of Jesus. Love does not brag about himself around you. Please give me that uh, Romans uh, 13, please. Oh, sorry. First Corinthians 13. Love doesn't brag about itself. Yes. Charity vaunted not itself and is not puffed up. That means if it, indeed you have the love of Christ in you, you won't be egotistic. Some people have so much ego, they walk around. You know, with so, even so-called Christians, they want to show off. They are so full of themselves. Such people, even when they help others, any small thing, they will go and say, it's not me, I'm the, if not for me, ah. The child will not be in school. I'm the one that paid the school fees. We should not do that. Whatever we do in secret, and the Lord that sees us will reward us openly. And the person that is so puffed up and is so full of himself that is going about broadcasting everything has already received his reward. Such people that are so ego ego egotistic, they find it difficult to say sorry. Even when they offend you or... or even when they know they are wrong, because of that pride, because of that ego in them, they can't say sorry. As a child of God, we are not supposed to be like that. Love never seeks its own. It only seeks the good of others. That means love, uh, that's uh, verse 5, please. Okay, does, uh, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not our own. But it's not, secret not our own. So everything is not about me. If you have the love of Christ in you, you are not selfish. You are not self-centered. Some people, when they make about five sentences, you just see everything is about me, hi, myself, all about them. If indeed you have the love of Christ in you, you will not be self-centered. It's not all about you. You will never be, self, you'll not be selfish. You will never insist on having your own way all the time. You won't, you won't say that uh, once they don't take my opinion, that is all. Not that thing will not work. No. It's all, ab all about you. And we can see that in the display in the life of Abraham and Lot in Genesis chapter 11. When the headsman of Abraham and that of Lot, they started quarreling because the space they had was too small for them. So they, Abraham now said, it's better they go different ways. And, uh, you know, 
Lord chose the, you know, the, the, the place where he taught, the beautiful place, the place that is nice. He chose first. He could have said, ah, you are my uncle now, choose first. Whatever is remaining, let me choose. He chose first. But you can see Abraham, he didn't even argue. He allowed him to have his way. So love never insists on having his own way. Our love is not easily provoked. That means it's not prone to anger or bitterness. Does not pay attention to insults, lies, or criticism. If you are indeed anointed, if you have the glory of God upon your life, people will surely talk about you. They will say all sorts. But if you have the love of Christ in you, you all that one will not, you will not be, it won't disturb you in any way. You won't. And we can see that displayed in the life of uh, Pastor Adeboye during this convention. Because people were saying all sorts about him. They said he was, not, he was using another power. It was not the power of God. We can see the way he handled that situation. He could have gone to the press and, and you know, start uh, talking back. He could have gone to Dove TV and had a broadcast. He could have prayed that uh, uh, all his enemies should fall down and die. He, he, he could have prayed that, ah, Oluwa, plead my cause. Fight against them that fight against me. But did he do that? No. That is because he has the love of Christ in him. Instead of doing that, we prayed a very dangerous prayer in camp. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Love never keeps account. Next. Uh, okay. Love never keeps account of any wrong that you've done to, to him. If you have the love of Christ in you, then you don't keep account. Some people can keep account. They will tell you what did you did five years ago, what you did ten years ago, ah, what did you, you did twenty years ago, ah, ah, ah. They have it all there. They don't hold. If you have the love of Christ in you, you will not hold grudges. You will not dwell in evil that people did to you long ago, because you would have forgotten and you would have forgiven them. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. God said our sins and our iniquities, he will remember them no more. So why are you still holding on to that grudge? Why are you still hold on, holding on to that thing the person did to you five, four, ten years ago? We need to let go. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Love never rejoices in unrighteousness, but only in the truth. You don't rejoice in bad things that happen to people, especially your enemies. When, when, when people that you term your enemies, when bad things happen to them, you don't say, ah, ori mitsimu. Mm. No, we don't rejoice when bad things happen to them. We rejoice only in the truth, if the truth is proclaimed. Then love bears all things. It bears all things, all your shortcomings, all your failures, all imperfections, in the, in the, and patiently over, overlooks people's faults. If you have the love of Christ in you, you bear all things. You bear their imperfections. You remember you yourself, you are not perfect. There's no perfect person. So you bear the imperfection in the life of others around you. Instead of dwelling in their weakness, you concentrate on their strength. Instead of dwelling in the weakness of people, there's no, no matter how bad the person is, the person will always also will have one strength. I and my daughter were discussing uh, Pastor Kunle Ajayi and what uh, Daddy Gio said about him, that he was rascally. But then they discovered that he loved something. He loved playing musical instruments. And through this love, they brought out the best in him. So don't, don't, don't concentrate on the weakness of others and use it. Look for that area, that strength that they have. Praise the Lord. Love believes all things. He believes when somebody says, I'm sorry. He believes when the person says, I will not do it again. Love endures all things. God's love causes us to carry on despite hardships. Despite hardships, whatever we might be going through, the love of Christ helps us to carry on. Love never gives up when people fail, abandon, or forsake us. So when people fail us, when they forsake us, you don't give up. You continue to, 
you know, to strive on. Next verse. And the, the last one says, charity never fails. Love never fails. Because God is love. And because God never fails, love never fails. Praise the name of the Lord. So the... So if God never... Sometimes you ask yourself this question. If indeed God never fails... If indeed God loves us so much, then why are we going through what we are going through? We, when, we, when we pass through some challenges, the thing on our mind is, ah, is God still there? Does he, has he abandoned me? No. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. What happens is that the devil, he takes our focus of the love of God, of the love that God has for us, and he makes us to focus on that challenge. All we see is that challenge. Instead of seeing the love of Christ in us. In Genesis chapter 2, 8 to 9. Genesis 2, 8 to 9. It says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. So all these trees that were there were pleasant to the sight and good for food and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. See, so you can see that. From here you can see that all the trees there, they were pleasant to the eyes. It was not only one tree. There, there, there were lots of trees. So how come all that he focused on, all our attention was in that tree? That one, that particular one that God said it should not it from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is what the devil does. He, he, it, it takes our attention off the love of God. And all we focus on is that challenge. That challenge that we're going through. And it makes us to doubt if God really loves us. The truth of the matter is that if you are a believer indeed, if you have surrendered your life to Jesus genuinely, then you have the love of Christ in you. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in her heart by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. One translation says that the love of God is poured. Yes. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out. In our hearts, by the Holy Spirit, who, has given her, who, who was given to us. So once you surrender your life to Jesus, and you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, then the Holy Spirit, what he does is that he pours God's love into your heart. It's just like pouring water into a cup. He pours water into your heart. And the water, the, 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 the spills, the, the cup becomes full, and it overflows, and the, the, the love that the Lord pours into your, hand, into your heart, you are able to spread, you are able to show to others around you. And remember, the, the, the text says, it has been poured into your heart. So as a child of God, you already have the love of God in you. You already have it in you, because the Holy Spirit poured the love of God into your heart. So if you are born again and you are spirit-filled, and you are finding it so difficult to show love to others, then there's something wrong somewhere. Because according to the passage, the love of God has been poured into our hearts. And the good news is nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. According to Romans chapter 8, 35 to 39, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him. 
that loved us. Yes. So there's nothing whatsoever that can separate us from the love of God. There are so many things that were listed here. Tribulations, which is a word for difficult trials. And we can see that in the life of Job. Job went through a lot. And during one of our, our digging days, Sister Ogo taught us so much about Job. All that happened to Job and all, I really enjoyed that, that sermon. That is, at the end of Job's life, his, his latter hand was far better than his beginning. So tribulation cannot, cannot uh, separate us from the love of God. Even persecution. As Christians, we are persecuted, but that is not enough to take us away from the love of God. Also, famine and nakedness. Famine and nakedness, just like what we are experiencing in Nigeria. There's so, there's so much going up around in the land. There's so, so many things that are happening. So many things are happening. A bag of rice is now around 50,000 or even more than that. We know how much we buy fuel. People are going through a lot. But that cannot separate us from the love of God. Most Nigerians are now fit because, you know, most of us, we trek long distances, but then that cannot separate us from the love of God because we know that God loves us and because we know, we know and we know that the Lord that turned around the, the, the situation in Samaria is still on the throne. And if we turn around the situation in Nigeria, in the mighty name of Jesus, So we've learned so much about the love of God. How do we prove to God that we love him? We know that God loves us so much. He loves us so much that he gave us his only son to die for us on the cross. How do we show our love to God? How do we show that we love him? How do we prove it? Number one is by obedience. 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 John chapter 14 verse 15. By our obedience, we will prove to God that we love him. John 14, 15. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you love God, we'll keep his commandments, all his commandments. But we know that the whole commandment has been summarized into two. Matthew 22, 36 to 40. It says, likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last, I said, Matthew, okay, 36, sorry. Matthew 22, 36, oh, sorry, 36. 3, 6. Okay. It said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yes. We should love our neighbors as ourselves. If indeed you love your neighbor as yourself, you will not want your neighbor to go to a hellfire. You will, not want your, you, you will not want your neighbor to perish. You will go out and you preach the gospel. You go out and preach the good news about our Lord Jesus Christ to your neighbor. John chapter 15 verse 16. John 15 16. John. It says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever, whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Let's leave it there. Please leave it there. Yes. God wants us to go out and preach the gospel. 
Let's go out and tell our neighbors and people around us. Let's preach the good news about our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says that we should preach and ensure that our fruit remains. So it's not just about going there to preach. We must ensure that the fruit remain. And it says, whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He gave us a blank check. Perhaps you have been praying and you have been trusting for God for a particular thing. You have been praying and praying. And it's as if the answer is not coming. Why not try this? Try evangelism. Go out and preach the gospel. And it says whatsoever. So you, whatsoever, whatsoever you want, whatsoever you ask, God will give it to you as you obey him in the mighty name of Jesus. Another way that we can prove to God that we actually, lo actually love him is in the area of giving. We learned that on Tuesday, yes. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God gave us his best. So we should give God the best. When we give God the best, that means we are showing to him that we actually love him. Then love for his house. If you love God, you love coming to church. You love coming to his house. The house of your, of your lover is not too far. No matter where the person lives, you can go all the way. But nowadays, what do we have? Most people, they will say, ah, oh, well, I don't need to go to church. I can watch it online. Yes, I can watch online. Everything they are doing, I can say. If you love God, then you will not forsake the assembly of the brethren. Psalm 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So you must be glad. If you have the love of Christ in you, then you must be glad. You must have joy in you. You must be, have that zeal to go to the house of God, to go to church. That zeal must be in you. Then love for praise and worship. Yes. You must love to praise and worship God. Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth yes if you love the lord one way of showing is is by praising and uh, worshiping him then love for service if you love god then you must love to serve him you must serve him you want to serve him it's just like a, a, a mother or a father when you come home and your children are there they, you see them come here, mommy, mommy, they will carry your bag, carry everything you are carrying, they will, they will want to take from you. Why? Most of the time it's because of the biscuit that is inside, but it's part of the service. If you love somebody, then you want to serve the person. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the name of the Lord. Then you must also love the word. If you love the Lord, you must love the word. You must study, you must meditate on the word. You must read your Bible. You must have a daily schedule that you use for, for Bible study, for the word. Something that you must do daily. Just like we need food. Every day you must eat. You eat every day. So you must ensure that you study the word also every day so that you can grow spiritually. And in conclusion... The greatest prosperity in this world is knowing God and loving him. And as we learned, we said nothing can separate us from the love of God. The only thing that can separate you from the love of God, the only person that can separate you from the love of God is you yourself. You are the only person that can separate yourself from the love of God. You ask how. If you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Today we learned about the love of God, the agape love. And we know that the love is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. If you are not born again, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, then this love of God cannot be poured into your heart. Please, let's, let's, let's close our eyes. If you want, this morning you want the Lord of, of God to be poured into your heart. You want to say yes to the Lord so that nothing whatsoever will separate you from the love of God. Let's just signify by raising up our hands. Let's say... Yes to you, Lord. Let's rise up to your feet. I love you, Lord. 
Oh, your mercies never fails me. Choir, help me. All my days have been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving us the best gift ever. Thank you for loving us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, your steadfast love. Oh, thank you, Lord, your love towards us. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you gave us your best gift. Oh, your only son. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Say, Father, let all things work together for my good. Because I love you, Lord. Father, let all things work together for my good. Even the challenge I'm going through. Even the present situation I'm in. Ah, Father, let all things work together for my good. Father, let all things work together for my good. Even according to your word. Oh, let all things work together for my good. Let all things work together for my good. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, let all things work together for my good. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. Said, so let all your let all your things be done with charity. Let us pray that, Father, help me to do all things in law. Everything I'm doing, every step of the way. And, Father, help me to do all things in love in the mighty name of Jesus. All things in love. In the name of Jesus. All things in love. Help me, help me, O oh Lord, to do all things in love in the name of Jesus. O oh, Father, we pray, Lord, help your church. That all things that we do, we do it in love, Lord. In the name of Jesus, help us that in our homes we do everything in love. In our, oh Lord God, schools, oh Lord, in our place of work. Help us to do all things in love. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Let us stretch our hands to our minister that the Lord has used this morning to bless us. Let us ask that God will replenish her in all ways in the name of Jesus. That God will visit her and replenish every virtue that she has given out today. That she will receive a double portion in the name of Jesus. Let us pray that every area that she is lacking in love, that God will fill her afresh. In the name of Jesus, that she will be a testimony of the love of God and every area of her life in her work, in her home should be a testimony of God's love in the name of Jesus let us pray that she, this world that she has shared this morning it will not stand against her on the day of judgment that she will walk in righteousness all the days of her life in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus name we have prayed praise the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. Shall we package our offering as we take uh, this brief scripture? We have learned this morning that one of the acts of love is giving. Is giving. So we're going to look briefly at the book of 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. 
2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. And it says, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Praise the Lord. So we encourage this morning to give cheerfully because there are benefits attached to giving. And not just giving because you're being because it's offering time, but give with joy in your heart. So this morning we're encouraged to give, give with Jesus joy. Praise the Lord. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. the accounts so for those who are online you can give your offering online and some of us even in the house that want to give by transfer you have all the accounts stated there for tithes for offering and for the church project so you can give online and you can give the hard currency praise the lord let's stretch our hands to the offering and begin to appreciate our god for this offering this morning for the tithes Let's thank God for the tithes and the titers. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name, O oh Lord. We thank you for every, O oh Lord God Almighty, offering that we have brought this morning, be it for the church project, be it our tithes, O oh Lord, and our offering, and even the seeds that we're sowing for any particular purpose. Lord, because you know the heart of man, there is nothing that is hidden from you. We ask, O oh Lord, that you attend to all our desire according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and every of your promises, O oh Lord, God, concerning the giving of our tithes. Father, Lord, let every tither be a beneficiary, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let the windows of heaven be open. Father, over, O oh Lord, God, your children, Lord, God, this morning, this month, this year, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you accept our offering, O oh Lord. Let it come to you a sweet smell and savour, O oh Lord. And Father, we pray that the windows of heaven will be open and you release fresh blessing upon us this week, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's sit down while we take the announcements. Hallelujah. Do we have any first time in the house? You're worshipping with us for the first time. Any first timer? Hallelujah. Let's welcome our first timer. You're welcome in the name of the Lord. We are happy to see you here. We're welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. We can see all over you. Welcome in the name of the Lord. 
The Lord has brought you here for a purpose, and that purpose will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Your coming here will not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. You will know it, you will see it, and you will testify of it in the name of Jesus. We have given you a card. Please fill it, and uh, just give us your address. Your phone contact will not be a nuisance. Your first time here, you're a first time after today. You are a member of the family, and you are welcome every time. Praise the Lord. All right, so our services, we have um, Tuesday Digging Deep, 6.30 to 7.30. And um, it's always a refreshing time. So if you have not been coming, make it a point of um, duty to always come. If you are busy, probably because of work, you can connect online. We have our social media handles. We have our Facebook, our YouTube um, uh, show house assembly just put show house assembly in the search uh, cell and then it will come up praise the lord so on thursday too we have faith clinic where we come together to pray as a family 6 30 p.m to 7 30 and on sunday like this the first our family service will have the first one 7 30 to 9 a.m after which we do the sunday school for 30 minutes and then the second family service comes up 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Anytime we cannot make it physically, let's try to connect online. It's not uh, always good to miss our services. Praise the Lord. Okay, so today is the Teens Fellowship. <laughs> Hallelujah. And today the teens are coming out in a different way. We're going to have a film show. Yes, so when you come, you will know the title of the film. So if you want to watch our film, please come. And you're going to be blessed. We're also going to have a worship and counseling session during the uh, fellowship. Praise the Lord. And then the women in the house. Hallelujah. Women, we're having our meeting after the second service, our monthly prayer meeting. we coming up after the second service. Workers will be having a retreat next week, Saturday. All workers should pray and plan to attend and we are expected to be on ground as from 7 a.m. in the morning at least we should be we should be here before 8 praise the Lord house fellowship comes up every Sunday so let's um, connect with the closest house fellowship in our to us let's connect and be a part of the house fellowship center the details you can always get it from the church admin we have about six house fellowship centers so if you have not been attending house fellowship please try and connect to one there's always a blessing of being a part of the house fellowship next sunday is our youth worship service a youth in the house and joe says if you are not if you are not older than him you're a youth so we are all youth now Avi. all right praise the lord so we are all encouraged to be to be here next week sunday and the theme is boundless love the heart of worship praise the lord our bible summer camp continues this week monday wednesdays and friday and we're going to have another set of activities including our bible study we're going to have our sewing class we're going to have crafts the reading club continues and we're going to have baking this week too praise the lord as we plan to attend so let's encourage our children our teenagers to come the teenagers the children of your neighbors invite them invite them even the people you've not been talking to this is an opportunity for you to talk to them Tell them that something is happening in Shaw House Assembly and the children should come and benefit. Praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. How many people still know that God loves them in this house? How many people? You are sure, you are sure that God still loves you. It does not matter what is going on. It does not matter what is happening. God still loves you. Rise up on your feet and just lift that hand to God and just thank Him for loving you. For still loving you, just, just give Him all the praise. Give Him all the glory. Give Him all the honor. Give Him all the adoration. Just thank Him. Just bless His name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. During the week, last week, I received several testimonies to the glory of God. And I'm happy. Amen. 
testimonies from different people in this church and I want to give God all the glory for the wonderful testimonies. It is encouraging that God is answering prayers even in this house. Amen. He will answer your own too. He will answer my own too. He will answer your prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. So as you go home today, I want to assure you, not like the way we say it in Nigeria, you know, I want to assure you. I uh -huh, assure you that language is common with Nigeria and a lot of time when it is said you, there are some elements of lies there uh -huh. but I'm saying it that God still loves you I want you to go home with this assurance based on the word of God God still loves you and God also wants you to do something as you go home this week that last scripture that Dickness Bolanle uh, talked about First Corinthians chapter 16. I think it's verse 4. Is that verse 4? It was as if I just seen it for the first time. <laughs> that whatsoever you do, do it in love. Did you see? Please let's have it. First Corinthians chapter 16, I think verse 4, 14. Let's. Verse 14, please, I guess. Ah. 14. Look at it. Let's read it together. I want to go. All things. Let all your things be done with charity. Let's take it one more time. Let all your things be done with charity. Like what things now? Like what things? That when you chastise a child, when you chastise your friend or a church member, when you eat, when you give something to somebody, let all things be done with love. All things. All things. So as we go out this week, whatever we do, whatever we say out, let it be done with what? with love. Let love be the basis for our doing it. And God will help us in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Say, Father, help me to do all things with love, with charity, throughout this week and beyond. In the name of Jesus. Talk to the Lord. Father, I ask that you help me to do all things with charity, with love, as I go into this week and beyond in the name of Jesus the grace, the capacity to do all things with love according to your word I receive in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus mighty name we pray father in the name of Jesus we thank you for this morning we thank you for your presence because you said where two or more are gathered in your name you are there Thank you for being present here. Thank you for your word. And thank you for answered prayers. Daddy accepts our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have revealed your love to us. One more time today. We pray, oh God, help us to accept your love. Help us to love you in return. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, like the disciples and the apostles of old. They said we love him because he first loved us. Lord God Almighty, please give us the grace to love you more. In the name of Jesus. And as we go into this week, Lord God Almighty, let us see your mighty hands in our affairs. Let us see you in action in our affairs. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God of heaven, you told us in the, in the book of 2 uh, Chronicles chapter 26 that, and verse 15 that Uzziah was very strong. You made him strong because he was marvelously helped. This week I pray for everyone listening to us today and everyone that is here that we shall receive marvelous helps. That you will marvelously help us. That you will send help to everyone. Every help that is needed in our homes, in our businesses, in our finances, in our places of work, 
We receive this week in the name of Jesus. We receive this week in the name of Jesus. My Father and my God, even if your people cannot say amen, in your mercy I pray, please release help unto everyone. In the name of Jesus. There may be people here who are saying, I don't know anybody. We may not know people, but we know you. And you are the author, you are the giver of all good things. This week, oh God, in your own way, in the way that you can do it, please surprise us pleasantly. In the name of Jesus, this week let there be more wonderful testimonies. In this assembly, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the lives of men and women, let there be wonderful testimonies. In the name of Jesus, and whatever has been standing against the fulfillment of God's promises in your lives. Today, I cancel that thing. I stand against that thing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. We say thank you for the service. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you are going to do in the second service also. Take all the glory. Take all the honor for every instrument, human and material that you have used this day. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Sunday school is next. Please let's wait for the Sunday school. We shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.